Good evening. Welcome to APTN National News. I'm Melissa Ridgen. Omicron is quickly wrecking a lot of holiday plans as Canada grapples with the new COVID-19 variant. Today, the federal government announced the extension of some benefits to help people dealing with financial hardships that, that Omicron is causing. APTN's Fraser Needham also has more on what First Nations may be facing. It's been nearly two years of testing, wearing masks and taking shots to the arm. The Prime Minister says he understands Canadians are tired of the pandemic, but they need to think now of frontline workers and what's best for the country. When you think of how tired you are, how weary you are of having to deal with this COVID crisis that continues to go on and on and on, know that there are people more tired than you. Know that our healthcare workers haven't had much of a break over the past two years, that they've been going flat out. Indigenous Services Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Evan Adams says it remains unknown how the Omicron variant will affect First Nations. And there are so many, uh, uh, many factors that we just don't uh, know about uh, that I think we're, we're, all, we're all saying uh, maybe we should be um, careful uh, in the coming days uh, and less laissez-faire. So I think some people are definitely changing their, their uh, Christmas plans. Karen Bird is chief of the Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation in northern Saskatchewan. She says they have not been hit with an Omicron outbreak yet. However, the First Nation is still telling people to keep their contact numbers low over the holidays. It's easier said than done when you can't see family. It, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. And I, I feel for the people. And um, as long as you do what you can for your family, you know, have a family dinner, you know, have your gifts for your family. The other extended family will, you know, will see each other again. And there's always Zoom calls, phone calls, you know, make use of that, whatever way you can communicate to your family members. Dr. Adams had this to say further about First Nations and the new variant. A number of us who have had uh, two vaccinations uh, is slightly less than that of the Canadian average. The Canadian um, average for two vaccines is quite high. It's over 90 percent. And we're just under that. Uh, and uh, we know that Omicron has, has shown that, that um, at least the MNR, uh, mRNA uh, vaccines are slightly less effective against Omicron. So having a third dose, having that third dose um, uh, greatly boosts immunity. Trudeau also announced the government is expanding COVID-19 benefits for workers and businesses affected by the new lockdowns and capacity limits. But Indigenous Services Canada has yet to announce any new programming or funding to help First Nations deal with the Omicron variant. Fraser Needham, APTN National News, Ottawa. As the new COVID-19 Omicron variant continues to spread across the country, provinces like Quebec and BC are implementing new restrictions to keep the virus at bay. Here's Sarah Connors with a look at the latest COVID-19 developments. As Omicron is sweeping across Canada, hard-hit provinces like Quebec are tightening restrictions. On Monday, the province shut down many public settings, including bars, gyms, and even some schools. Quebec's health minister says more restrictions are likely in store, and an announcement is planned for this evening. We don't like that, but I think that's the only way to manage this crisis is to react as quickly as possible with the resources that we have. Over 6,000 new cases of COVID were reported in Quebec today, breaking yet another record of new COVID infections. With almost 30,000 active cases, the province is leading Canada in COVID infections. Health officials say the new Omicron variant now accounts for around 80% of Quebec's cases and hospitalizations are rising. With Omicron cases soaring in Quebec and other jurisdictions, BC isn't taking any chances. There are still many things we do not yet know about Omicron and its impacts on the health care system and on people um, in British Columbia and around the world. On Tuesday, health officials announced new COVID measures, including the closures of bars and gyms, as well as limited restaurant seating. And really, it is about buying us time to understand and to prepare the consequences of not slowing things down, of not taking these actions, are just too dire. Tuesday's announcement comes on the heels of other new restrictions that took effect in the province as of Monday, such as a ban on all sports tournaments and New Year's Eve's events. 
The province currently has over 6,000 active cases of the virus. Over 700 cases in B.C. have been identified as the Omicron variant. In Manitoba, 400 new cases were announced today, bringing the active case count to over 2,600. At least a quarter of today's cases are thought to be of the Omicron variant. So we are going to see, you know, Omicron, just like in other jurisdictions, become that dominant strain. It's going to happen relatively soon. On Tuesday, health officials put new limits on household gatherings. Places that require proof of vaccination are limited to half capacity, like gyms, movie theaters and restaurants. K-12 schools will also have an extended Christmas break due to rising cases. Students will return to class on January 10th. You have the opportunity to make, you know, child care arrangements and plan for that. It gives us a little bit more opportunity on the public health side to understand that risk. In Nunavut, two cases have been identified in Pangertung on Baffin Island. They're the first cases identified in the small community of 1,500 people. It's not yet known if they're linked to Omicron. Nonetheless, Nunavut's premier says he's concerned. We are seeing mounting cases of Omicron across the country, and the statistics are alarming. Out of precaution, travel to Pangertung is limited to essential only. Anyone who travels outside of Nunavut and returns is now required to self-isolate if they don't have both vaccinations and a booster. Sarah Connors, APTN National News, Whitehorse. Has the new variant and restrictions affected your holiday plans? And how are you feeling about this seemingly endless pandemic? You can share your thoughts with us. Send your emails to news at aptn.ca. You can leave a comment on aptnnews.ca. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Follow APTN News and join the conversation and see all of our latest stories. Well, finding and maintaining secure housing in Yellowknife can be a challenge, especially for young people. But one organization in Yellowknife is trying to ensure no one is left out in the cold. Charlotte Mort Jacobs brings us that story. Kaya Goulet dreams of a day where she won't have to worry about where she'll sleep that night. And today, she's one step closer to making that dream a reality. Goulet is 19 years old and Yellowknife's Dene from Dilo. She began experiencing housing issues at 16 because of alcoholism in her family. Like when they drink, they tend to kick me out and it happens quite frequently. So um, I always have to like resort to like going to friends' couches or my grandma's or another family member's or even my boyfriend's. Accessing help can be hard. I've recently been applying for um, other housing like in Delo for like one of the apartments down there and it's like $2,200 a month for a one bedroom. Today she's applying for housing with Homebase, a not-for-profit that supports youth in Yellowknife. The organization recently purchased this building to create apartment units for youth aged 12 to 24. Executive Director of Home Base Tammy Roberts says the beauty of the building is that supports will come to the youth. The goal of the complex is to be able to have youth have their own space, but also the really great thing about it is there's going to be on-site support. So we do have uh, two staff that work full-time for that program. Robert says the organization is already looking at constructing a second building on the double lot. There's still a large population of people that house surf that um, I'm hoping that, you know, they can see what we're doing and maybe come forward so that we can also support them so they're not putting themselves in dangerous situations. At the youth centre... Thomas Paradis, age 20, knows just how difficult it can be getting back on your feet. He moved up to Yellowknife two years ago from Quebec, but got himself into trouble dealing drugs. I come from like a middle class white family. I just made one mistake and ended up me just end up here and be stuck. I have nowhere else to go. My parents didn't want me to come back. But with the support of Home Base Emergency Shelter, he was able to finish high school and recently moved into an apartment in June. I kind of got a good fit with my roommate and to be honest, the really most important thing for to survive here up north, you need to have some people's help you, not be alone. Goulet hopes she too can benefit from home base. I know my, my little brothers and sisters, like, well, they deal with my toxic household as well, so 
it would be nice to like get my own place and if they ever like need to come over for a night or two then they would I would welcome them into my home. Charlotte Moore Jacobs, APTN National News, Yellowknife. We need to take a break, but still ahead. Looking back at 2021, some big stories in different regions. Stay with us. A major trial, the plight of a homeless camp, and a First Nation with millions of dollars gone. Those were just some of the stories in a busy year for the central and northern part of Alberta. APTN's Chris Stewart looks back at some of the year's biggest moments. January began with the retrial of Bradley Barton. In 2015, a jury found him not guilty of first-degree murder in the death of Cindy Gladue. He was retried for manslaughter and found guilty after a five-week trial. His motion for a mistrial was denied, and he was later sentenced to 12 and a half years in jail. We're happy that Cindy finally got her justice. And the judgment of the nation was uh, that they wanted this overturned. So disappointed, not surprised. Family absolutely relieved to hear that there was a conviction. Uh, there's, again, probably no words I can express. They were, uh, you know, everybody was crying for joy, <laughs> relief that, that that was the actual decision. Um, but it, I tell you, there's a recognition right up until that very last minute that you just never know. In January, newly elected U.S. President Biden officially canceled the Keystone Pipeline that would have shipped over 800,000 barrels of oil a day from Alberta to the U.S. Alberta had already spent $1.3 billion building the pipeline. Also in January, the community of Muscatice, which is made up of four communities, was hit hard by COVID. T. Vernon Saddleback said that there were nearly 600 active cases. They only have four active at this time. In April, the Alberta government announced a new curriculum for kindergarten to grade six. The history of residential schools will only begin teaching at grade five. Many groups oppose the change, including president of the 60s Scoop Indigenous Society of Alberta, Adam North Pagan. I'm concerned that it's going to be uh, uh, minimized or it's going to be rationalized, it's going to be justified. Uh, and, and as a result, you know, uh, the students are not going to be uh, really be able to maintain, uh, you know, the actual true history of, uh, you know, uh, of Canada. The question that we have is, in April, Treaty 8 Grand Chief Arthur Noski told APTN the Assembly of First Nations does not represent them in nation-to-nation -nation negotiations, including Bill C-15, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act, or UNDRIP. AFN does not speak on behalf of Treaty 8, and I believe that they are not in tuned or in touch with a lot of our grassroots people in understanding the sovereign relationship that we have, because if they did, if they knew that these treaties were sovereign to sovereign agreements, why would they be there trying to speak on behalf of them? That bill is now law. In May, Edmonton Oilers defenseman Ethan Bear was subjected to racial slurs after a bad play in the playoffs. A rally was held showing support for the young hockey player. Fifteen years ago, Edmonton Oilers had five black players, five. I sat row two behind the net, and the stuff that came out of the mouth of those fans, when one of those players turned the puck over, was incredible. You know, and the thing is, people sat and listened to it. When you sit and listen to this stuff, when you sat and you didn't comment on those attacks to Ethan, you are complicit. I'm talking to you. You're watching TV at home, you are complicit. Ethan Bear was traded to the Carolina Hurricanes in the offseason. Like the MNA. In June, the Metis Nation of Alberta filed a lawsuit against the Alberta government. She President Audrey Portra says the Alberta Lord. UCP government is not negotiating a consultation policy with the MNA. Alberta deliberates endlessly on whether to consult with Metis communities using a case by case approach that is tangled in red tape and that Alberta's own bureaucrats have admitted does not work. This is systemic racism in action. 
In August, dozens of homeless people camped out beside the Rock Soup Greenhouse and Food Bank in Wetaskiwin, south of Edmonton, after losing an indoor shelter funded by the city. If we close the shelter, where are people going to go? If we close the shelter, um, you know, how are people going to eat? And these questions just kept going unanswered by, um, by the powers that be. People were then sent behind a Walmart to live in tents, living there for months, with temperatures quickly falling. Carrie Lou has a plate in her arm from a fall. Oh, I didn't realize that having a plate in your arm when it gets cold, it really, really hurts. It's like I, I cried in my tent for two hours in agonizing pain. And it, I don't know, we need a, a warm building to live in for, like, for the winter. The mustard seed currently runs a 24-7 warming shelter. Up to two dozen people say they will stay at the camp, even with temperatures in the minus 30s. So many other reserves are in In December, Frog Lake resident Doris Stanley and others told APTN that they are concerned about where $120 million went between 2013 and 2018. Publicly available records show large losses in a trust fund and long-term investments. An auditor who looked at the publicly available documents says the band should be doing better financially. The people of Frog Lake should be really well off. They should be living in mansions in comparison to other bands. I want to find out for myself, you know, by an, in an independent financial auditor. You know, I want to know the truth. The people are entitled to know the truth and that we need to find out, you know, what did happen, what happened to that money. APTN spoke to Edmonton Police Chief Dale McPhee for a year-end interview. He was asked about the incident caught on camera showing an Edmonton police officer kicking a prone man in the back of the head in 2019. The officer was found guilty of assault and fined $2,000. Will he remain on the force? Well, that officer is obviously suspended right now without pay um, and so when we look at that obviously there's a process that still has to take place but when we make that decision it's not something that we take lightly obviously when you make a decision like that the intention is that they won't be long with us long term those are some of the biggest moments in Edmonton Central and North for 2021 Chris Stewart APTN National News Edmonton Thanks for that, Chris. Well, it's time for us to take another break, but when we come back, In Focus showcased dozens of talented singers and dancers today, including some cute kids singing carols in Korea and Ojibwe. We've got highlights from that show when we come back. Welcome back. Today on In Focus, we celebrated Christmas, winter solstice, the festive season in general, including grade one to five language students at Isaac Brock School here in Winnipeg who sang in Cree and Ojibwe. Here's a clip. <laughs>
were the little grade winners. There were grade five kids too. They were also singing. You can find that entire episode of In Focus on our website, aptnnews.ca. Look for In Focus. Uh, as the year comes to a close, we're looking at some of the most popular stories to hit APTN national news in the past year. Our social media editor, Jesse Andrusko, analyzed our website to see what captured your interest this year online. Tell us, Jesse. It was a busy year for APTN News Online. Millions of readers visit our website and here's what grabbed their attention this year. The most viewed stories of aptnnews.ca were about the discovery of unmarked graves at the former Kamloops Residential School. The shock and grief rippled across the country, prompting national gatherings to honour the children who died at the school. In some cities, those gatherings led to colonial statues coming down. The video we published on July 1st of the statue of Queen Victoria being pulled down at the Manitoba Ledge generated a lot of views on the APT News TikTok page. Residential schools continue to be top of mind when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called a snap federal election in mid-August. For the first time, APTN News was invited to participate in the federal leaders debate with our own Melissa Ridgen grilling the candidates. Her performance trended on Twitter with people saying, the most progressive winner of, of the debate 2021, Melissa Ridgen, APTN News. And Melissa Ridgen is incredible. I could listen to her all night. Social media was the source of, for some of our top stories in 2021. In March, we reported on a racist coffee ad that sparked outrage in Calgary because the owner of the company wanted to run for mayor. In February, a Facebook group came to the rescue of a little girl in Saskatchewan who was shamed for wearing a traditional ribbon skirt to school. Hundreds of members of, of the group posted photos of themselves wearing ribbon skirts everywhere they went, even shopping for groceries. And what was our most popular story of 2021? It also came from Saskatchewan, where 89-year-old Simon Sapp was subjected to poor service at a fabric store. The First Nations grandfather was buying material for a Sundance ceremony when he was treated rudely by an employee. The story went viral on our social media pages and generated a ton of comments like, you don't need cultural training, you need to have human being training. And this is so wrong on every level. As you can see, it's been a full year of emotional stories. We thank everyone for watching, reading, and sharing our stories online. Thank you so much, Jesse. Well, that is your midweek news. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Melissa Ridgen. I'll see you back here in the new year, but the rest of your APTN news team is back here tomorrow, so tune in. Have a wonderful holiday season, and we're going to leave you with some festive sights and sounds in Ottawa. Yeah.